your YouTube thumbnail can either make your video go viral or cause it to be completely ignored. So you have to choose your thumbnail wisely. Creating the perfect YouTube thumbnail can feel overwhelming, especially when you're trying to combine design, text, and visuals in a way that grabs attention. It's frustrating to spend so much time making thumbnails only to see they're not helping your video get more views. But I found an easier way to make thumbnails that I'm about to share with you. So in this video, I'll introduce you to the best AI thumbnail maker called Pixels that can transform the way you design thumbnails for your YouTube videos. These thumbnails were created by copying and pasting a link into this tool, and then this was the AI generated thumbnail that I got in return. Before we dive into how Pixels works, let me give you an overview of what it can do. I'll show you how to use a simple prompt to create thumbnails like these. Next, I'll guide you on how to find successful thumbnails in your niche and create designs inspired by them. After that, we'll explore Pixel's face swap feature, a cool tool to make your thumbnails stand out with your face. Finally, I'll share my strategy for split testing thumbnails so you know when and how to test designs for the best results. To get started, head over to pixels.com and if you haven't signed up for it just yet, you can use my link down below in order to sign up for just $1, limited to the first 100 people. Keep in mind that you'll need a premium plan to unlock Pixels cloning feature, but trust me, it's 100% worth it for creating thumbnails that really grab attention. So here on Pixels pricing page, you can have a monthly subscription or an annual subscription. Usually the case with annual is that you do save 30% off if you are billed annually. But here they do have a free version, but honestly five thumbnails probably isn't a decent amount of attempts to actually try their software out. But they have an essential plan, which has 200 credits works in any language and then you have the thumbnail generator the premium plan is the one that i'm on just because i use the thumbnail recreation feature a lot you can also see that they have an ultimate package which allows you early access to their newest features so they do have a lot of features up and coming one thing i do want to point out is that every time you edit or create a thumbnail it does use credits so if you highlight over here, a thumbnail usually costs around 10 credits, a face swap usually costs around 3 credits, and one title generation usually costs 3 credits as well. So you'll be able to generate around 150 thumbnails for around $40 per month or $28 a month if you use their annual plan. But what's really neat is that the credits actually have an increasing limit, meaning that if you stay subscribed for three months, after month one, you'll get 1,100 credits, and after month two, you'll get 1,300 credits, and after month three, you'll get 1,500 credits. Now, after signing up with Pixel, this is what your dashboard is going to look like. So the first prompt is just an original concept of your thumbnail. So this is where you would just insert a prompt of how you want your thumbnail created. The second prompt is a recreate prompt where you would copy and paste the link to a YouTube video or you can upload the thumbnail. And then you see the section here where it says inspiration weight. Think about this as far as how similar do you want your thumbnail to be to the link that you provided here. Do you want it to be a low inspiration? Do you want it to be a medium inspiration? Or do you want it to be a high inspiration? So with the recreate prompt, I usually set the inspiration weight to medium or high. And then here you could actually go ahead and make any adjustments. The common changes that I usually make is that I usually either change the text or I change the gender or I change the color. So those are the three big things when it comes to making changes when you use the recreate prompt. Here we have a face swap feature. So in the first tab up here, you would upload any thumbnail or drag and drop it. So you would just get a thumbnail from YouTube and then you would upload your face or someone else's face here in order to do the face swap. So this one usually works if the skin tones are similar, but even so, I don't really use this one all too much. I mostly use the original thumbnail creator and then the recreate feature as well. Now notice how in the pricing page, they had this option here that talked about title generator. The title generator isn't available to everyone just yet, but it will be coming soon. And what the title generator does is that it allows you to generate video titles from topics. So if you insert the example, Ronaldo's luxury things, you'll see a title that get generated called stupidly expensive things that Ronaldo owns. So one of the prompts that I use when it comes to creating thumbnails for TV shows or upcoming movies is this one here. The cinematic poster for insert movie title here featuring highly detailed and dynamic characters in a dramatic pose. 
and then include the elements that reflect the movie's theme such as and then you basically describe any key settings or iconic props vibrant colors moody lighting and epic atmosphere hyper realistic textures ultra detailed 4k resolution and a professional hollywood style finish perfectly composed for maximum visual impact. So I went ahead and actually did it for the movie Avengers Doomsday since I have a video coming out on that soon. And then I insert the character Robert Downey Jr. dressed up as Doctor Doom. And then I edited the key settings and iconic props such as destruction, superpowers, and green wizardry magic. And so this was the output that came out. It takes a few seconds for the output to come out. But in order to actually modify this, you would simply just click on the edit button and it even indicates like, hey, this is going to cost you another 10 credits. So what would you like to change? Maybe I want to make the colors more contrast and zoom in a bit more. So let's go ahead and generate this one. So here's the updated version where it did zoom in on the character and the colors do pop out a bit more. But overall, very pleased with this as far as using this as a thumbnail for one of my YouTube videos. Now here on screen, you'll see just a couple more examples as far as thumbnails that I've created with pixels. But now if you want to replicate your inspiration channel's thumbnails, let me show you how to do that next. First, we need to find a winning thumbnail, one that grabs attention and gets clicks. A great way to do this is by studying other channels in your niche. Start with smaller channels that have low subscriber counts, but high view counts on some of their videos. This is a strong sign that the thumbnails are working even without a massive audience. But you could also look at larger established channels as well. Organize their videos by most popular and see which thumbnails have performed best over time. And pay extra attention to any recent viral videos within the past three months. These can give you insight into what's currently resonating with viewers. By analyzing these videos, you can start identifying thumbnails that you might want to replicate for your videos. So what we're going to do is that we're going to click on this recreate prompt over here. And then we need to link to a thumbnail or a YouTube video. So what I'll do is that I'll go ahead and link. Let's take one of Mr. Beast's thumbnails here and we'll organize it by videos. And let's actually go ahead and take, let's see. We'll take this thumbnail here, protect the Lamborghini or keep it. So simply just copy the link address, head back over to pixels and then click on the recreate tab and then copy and paste that link here. The inspiration weight we're going to set to high and then any changes you want like to make. If you go ahead and check back that previous thumbnail, we'll leave it as is as far as we'll keep everything the same and then click on generate. So this is the thumbnail that popped out and you can see the similarities where it's a car that's about to hit this car or it's a train that's about to hit this car and then the figure has changed as well. But even so, the thumbnail does look great. It's not perfect though. As you can see here, there's a hand that's coming out right over there. But if we look at our example, it's because Mr. Beast's hand is pointing outside the car. So it's not perfect, but it does get a really good idea as far as replicating successful thumbnails. Now, when starting out on YouTube, I strongly believe in starting by imitating what already works and then moving on to innovating your own style. There's no need to reinvent the wheel when there's so much to learn from successful YouTube thumbnails. Study what's grabbing attention on YouTube. Look at thumbnails from channels in your niche that have performed well. Once you've mastered the basics and have a feel for what type of thumbnails works for your channel, then you can start putting your own creative spin on it to make your thumbnails unique to your brand. Remember that sometimes success comes from learning what works and then making it even better. So with this thumbnail that you see here on screen, you can either do a face swap, you can redo the entire thumbnail, but that's going to cost you another 10 credits. You can edit the thumbnail as well. So you can maybe change the vehicle or change the facial expression. So there's a lot of things you can do to modify this thumbnail. And on screen here, I'll be showing you here are three more examples of thumbnails in which the before and after with using this recreate feature. So next let's click on generate. And so here we have the combination of the face swap shown. As you can see, it's not really that perfect, which is why I don't really use the face swap all too much. It works sometimes and it's really interesting to see what combination of figures ends up creating. But with the face swap, I'd say this feature does need a bit more time to kind of finalize and perfect. But the other features such as the original creation and the recreate feature all work pretty well from my experience. Now with Pixels, you can create 150 thumbnails for just $28 a month on the annual plan, 
or $40 a month on the monthly plan. And if you're posting around 15 to 30 videos a month, that gives you 150 thumbnails, which is enough for two to three versions for each video. Now that's a lot of content, but it's worth it because split testing thumbnails can significantly improve your video's performance. Testing different designs gives your videos more chances to succeed by seeing what works best with your audience. To split test your thumbnails, we'll use YouTube's built-in A-B testing feature. However, it's important to understand how this tool works because many creators mistakenly think it's all about comparing click-through rates or CTR. In reality, YouTube split testing evaluates thumbnails based on watch time and not just CTR. Think about it. YouTube's goal is to ensure your thumbnail accurately represents the video and keeps people watching. For example, a YouTube thumbnail with a 5% CTR might outperform one that is a 7% CTR if it leads to longer watch times. This proves that watch time is one of the most important metrics for success on YouTube, and the platform will favor videos that generate more of it. Now to set up a split test, just simply go into one of your videos, and then scroll down to where it says thumbnail, and right now I already have a split test running on here, but if you click on these three dots, you should see an option that says test and compare, and that is where you can upload all the different versions of your thumbnail. Now here are my guidelines for split testing thumbnails. For videos not in the algorithm, if your video isn't showing up in the YouTube algorithm, meaning no views in the past 48 hours, set up a split test with three different thumbnails. This gives you more opportunities to attract clicks and start getting traction. You might wanna also change the title alongside with it. For videos in the algorithm with a low CTR, meaning less than 7%, start by split testing at least two additional thumbnail variations. Don't change the title or description because this can affect the video's performance in the algorithm. Focus only on testing the thumbnails to improve click-through rates without disrupting the video's current momentum. For videos in the algorithm with a good CTR, meaning above 7%, it's best to usually leave it as is just because beating a 7% or higher CTR is pretty hard. If it's already performing well, there's no need to risk disrupting it, its success with unnecessary changes. Split testing thumbnails is like trying on different outfits before an important event. You wouldn't leave the house without knowing which one looks best, right? Each thumbnail is like a different outfit and the audience is your judge. By testing multiple designs, which one catches their attention and gets them to click. Creating those variations might feel overwhelming, but that's where Pixels becomes your personal stylist. It helps you quickly generate multiple thumbnail options, making the process easy and efficient. Just like trying on outfits, Pixels lets you experiment with colors, designs, and layouts to find that perfect fit that grabs viewers' attention and boosts your video's performance. The more thumbnails that you test, the better your chances of picking a winner. I will leave a link to sign up for Pixels down below where the first 100 people who sign up will be able to test it out for $1. So be quick and if you've liked this video, be sure to subscribe to the channel for more videos like this where I go over my journey with YouTube automation with AI and other AI tools.